the teacher known to you as Jesus, said to his disciple, You shall deny me. And Simon, known as Peter, said, I shall never deny you. And yet, under certain circumstances, this disciple did deny his teacher. Look you now into the recesses of your own mind, and find the teaching within you. Shall you deny that teaching today? Let us examine this concept further. How does one deny what one has learned? Is it by a word, a gesture, some portion of your life that is less than you would wish it? These things may be examined to good accountability, and yet the fruit of deeper teaching is a person. And when you deny your teaching, you are other than your teaching would have you be. When you strip your daily living of the outer masks, that which shall affirm or deny lies in what you are. And when you deny what you have become, then you are as the one known as Peter, saying, No, I do not know the one known as Jesus. You must be thinking of someone else. This entity, Peter, was of such a quality, such a fine and good nature and kind, that his leadership was known to the teacher, and his subsequent leadership has birthed both the good and the ill of that which you now know as Christianity. This was not a weak or cowardly man, and yet he denied that he knew. My friends, how easy it is not to know, how easy it is not to be, how very difficult from time to time it becomes to be who your teachings have led you to become. There was no rancor in the teacher's voice when he told his disciple, You shall deny me. There was only knowledge of the difficulty of responsibility, and this is what we speak to you of this evening, my friends. Each of you is responsible for what you have learned, for what you believe you may have learned, and for what you are considering. We do not suggest to you that there is a sure knowledge, nor one that is even available to those wiser than ourselves, for our teachers do not claim to know all that may be known in what you would call any intellectual manner. It is the heart of things to which we speak, to strike when we suggest that you are responsible to be yourself. We suggest further that you will find that difficult, and we suggest further that there is no unfortunate part in this apparent dichotomy, for that which you find difficult is that from which you learn. Therefore, your very difficulty in expressing what you have learned teaches you. There is a purpose to your mistakes, as you would call them. There is a reason for your confusion. You did not arrive upon this sphere intending to withdraw from this plane in the same condition the estate in which you came. You intended to know the Creator in more and more glory and in more and more accountability. You intended a great safari, and your game is the nature of love. That is your prey. The caliber of your weapon is the measure of how carefully you examine the difficulties that you are having in being yourself. Never judge yourself on seemingly outer behavior. Continually attempt to learn. Peter, Peter, we say to you, you shall deny love a million times, and in each denial you will come to know me better. And all the strangers that say to you, are you not the one who knows love? That which causes you to deny are aiding you. Do not forget to thank them in memory, for such are the ways of the learning of love, that the paths of the creatures who learn it are twisted, and many who appear to be fair prove difficult, and those who are most difficult are most mightily fair, for they have given you another denial and another step. Shall you find love then, my friends? You have no choice. You cannot reckon with your own nature. Shall you find it quickly? In that, my friends, you have a great choice. I bow humbly before you and thank you. If any word of mine has offended you, remove it from your mind. It gives us great, great pleasure to be of any service to this group, and we thank those who have called us. We have come in the beautific love and the infinite light of the one creator, Adonai Vasu.